All right, um, I'm gonna start my talk um, today about minimally invasive surgery and robotic surgery in my specialty, gynecology, and then at the end touch a little bit about the other specialty uh, and what AI technology is able to help with. For the last 11, 12 years or so, you can see the trend. The open cases are going down at the decline. So in, in gynecology, we use the robot to help um, do hysterectomy to treat benign condition like abnormal uterine bleeding, fibroid, endometriosis, and pelvic organ prolapse. And we can also use it to treat malignant cases uh, such as cervical cancer, uterine cancer, and ovarian cancer. So these are four modalities for surgery. And the latest that we have will be robotic assisted. So port placement for different modality of surgery. And for robotic surgery, we have to move our port site to a little higher up. The reason why we need to move our like, port placement a little higher up is because the robotic arm needs space to move in order for us to move, maneuver within the abdominal cavity. Now, this is, a, this is a setup for the robot system. So you have, this is the Da Vinci. It has four arms. So each arm can be used to utilize an instrument. One of those arms is always the camera, so we can see. And then the monitor with the digital imaging, so you can see really well. Um, the camera lens of the Da Vinci is um, very, very good. It has a 10 time magnification. And then intuitive motion software is, is really wonderful because um, tremors are taken care of. Yeah. So people can operate into the 70s, 80s. They don't have to worry about hand tremors in surgery. This is how the OR looks like inside. So the whole team in the room can see what's going on with the surgery. It's great for teaching um, medical student or resident. So these are the typical uh, robotic instrument. So you can use different instruments for different area of the, um, the procedure where you need it uh, to remove or dissect. You, know. you can see, given all the modality compared together, robotic, surgery is the lowest. All right, so this is comparing the Da Vinci surgery uh, versus individual approach. So when you compare the robotic surgery to open approach, they have shorter hospital stay, less blood loss, fewer, fewer complications, and lower risk of mortality. The estimated cost saving for each procedure um, when compared to open is about $14,000. Overall, this is for a single surgeon, uh, Dr. Swanson in uh, Nevada. Um, compare all of his cases for that year, the total cost, if he, if he opened all the patients that he have done on robotic, it would have cost almost $3 million more. So the cost saving is there. When the technology is used like, in the correct way, in, the, in the efficient way, all right, so the growth of robotic surgery uh, worldwide, um, they've seen a three times increase. And then last year, um, the company have given out about 1,800 certificate uh, certified robotic surgeon. Yeah. So it's like when you're trained in residency, um, you don't automatically get a robotic certificate right away. Um, once you go out and practicing in the area, then the Da Vinci rep will take you to their, their lab. Um, like here in California, their lab is up in, um, in Northern California, and then they will set up a porcine lab for you. So it's a pig lab. The pig is alive. They put the pig, uh, the pig under anesthesia, and then uh, they'll the set up um, all the instrument, and the Da Vinci is there, and then you're gonna be uh, performing surgery there. Uh, they want to make sure that you're competent and that you uh, can handle the technology properly before they issue that certificate. So resident training, and then you have to go through that, uh, that test with the company before they issue you the certificate. All right, so this is a, one of the newer technology out there. Um, some of my surgeon friends probably um, have heard of it. So this is a hybrid technology between robotic and laparoscopy. Because the robot is expensive to get, and not many hospitals are able to afford them, especially if you're in a more rural area. Um, 
not in the big like, academic center. Um, so this company is called Leaf Meds and it's in South Korea. Um, they have invented the device where it's a like laparoscopic rod, but the end of the tip has the wrist-like motion. So it, it would allow you to get to smaller area and suture laparoscopically a lot more easier. I think each of these devices is about six or seven hundred dollars to get. Yep. So see how it can move just like the robot, and then the surgeon will be controlling that handle right there, and the tip will operate uh, or move as you control it. Yeah. Uh, but now so this is this is the case that we did. This is Dr. Ramon Guerra. Um, he usually operate with me for sacral coccyx cases. Um, so we are using it to get to the uterine artery. So with the wrist light motion, it's really help us get around the curve, the big curve of the uterus on top there. Now, the Vinci company has about like 80, 90% um, share of the robot market right now. The new one that's in the work right now is for Medtronic. Um, their robot is called Hugo. So in the future, if there's more other company producing the robotic uh, assisted surgery platform, then I'm, I'm hoping the cost for the Da Vinci, uh, for the robotic assisted sur uh, surgery system will go down. So more people will be able to have it uh, available to, in their hospital. So far in the past, we've only have like robotic assisted surgery where the surgeon is controlling the robot. So this is without human help, without the surgeon controlling the robotic arm. The robotic arm did it by itself. The success was great. They did eight, case, uh, eight cases and all eight had very good uh, outcome. Yeah. They compared the result and it, there's equivalent to an expert surgeon performing the procedure. They learned this by watching like videos of surgeon who perform it. So you, how many of you in here have used chat uh, GPT? The AI, yeah. So it's very, very helpful, right? Yeah. So the same like um, learning architecture that they use to program chat GPT is the same that they use to teach the, the robot the steps on how to do the surgery. What is the benefit of incorporating AI into robotics? You have surgical precision and accuracy you have surgical efficiency, accessibility in terms of if you don't have that expert surgeon for that type of case there, but the robot is programmed to be able to do it, then the patient in that community can have access to that type of surgery. And so, I almost done, yeah. And then next one. And it reduces the position from being too tired to uh, operate in the traditional manner. Limitation of AI, the cost. So, of course, the development and implementation process will require a lot of like, initial um, financial investment into it. And then it's a technology, so you have to keep maintaining, updating the software, updating the program. And infrastructure upgrade, um, your operating room will have to be like, redesigned in a way where it can accommodate all this technology, the wiring and all that, yeah. And then it rely a lot on data quality, because when you create the AI algorithm to proceed with surgery, it watches the video or the data that you feed it. So therefore, if you feed it the data or the surgery that's not of high quality, it will follow that kind of quality. So the relying on like high quality data is very, very important in training the robots. And then ethical consideration, the, how to use it responsibly, and the liability. If the robot operated autonomously and there was a adverse outcome, um, how is liable is the surgeon? The surgeon didn't touch a patient, right? So there's a lot of things that we have to iron out as well. And then definitely we need a lot of guidelines and regulation for patient safety and also for medical legal issues that comes with it. Future direction, it definitely will have enhanced autonomy um, with the robotic uh, surgery because the robot can learn and it can adapt and it can make decisions in real time. In a way that would allow the patient to have personalized surgery because it can review the patient anatomy, um, the medical history and the genetic variation in between patients and decide what the best way to 
proceed with the surgery and what type of procedure will be most beneficial for the patient. 